This is Ohio State wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. He's the ex receiver that's built out of a lab and basically kind of is the son of a Hall of Famer. Uh, six foot four, 205 pounds, plays on the outside. And I think it's one of the most, the easiest evaluations that you can possibly draw up here. So I think that a lot of this conversation is just going to be historically how good of a prospect is he? And then how do we compare him versus neighbors? Marvin Harrison Jr. is a superstar. It, it really is that simple. He plays big, he plays small, he draws penalties, he scores touchdowns. He makes the difficult stuff look easy on mm -hmm. a, a routine basis. And I actually think sometimes maybe some of that effortlessness he plays his game with makes what he is doing look simple, look fluid, mm -hmm. and might have other people overlook it. I'm so excited to dive into this profile. And like you said, we'll do some maybe historical comparisons on top of it, because rarely do you get someone with this lineage, with these genetics, who was a big time recruit, who went to a big time program with a big time quarterback who produced at a massive rate. Yep. And then now he sits here in front of us. Mm -hmm. And yet some people don't have him as the wide receiver one in the class, but we can table that conversation. Let's talk more about Marvin Harrison Jr. As the player, six foot three, 209 pounds. What did you like about him? Well, he could beat press coverage at the line of scrimmage. He's running real routes and he's running all the routes. So I think that what you said, his ability to kind of bend and play fluidly for his length, I think is super impressive he's a very detailed route runner very fluid coming back to the ball can win crossing routes can win at the line of scrimmage but both because he's very strong so like press coverage corners you're not gonna be able to, be able to knock him off of his spot but i think that his standout trait to me is this kind of like and one mentality i think that at the catch point he can come down with some ridiculous grabs just because he's obviously has a huge catch radius but also he's a very tough physical player like basically the classic x receiver some comps that i kind of looked at like aj green and deandre hopkins alshon jeffrey allen robinson like this is kind of like archetype that we're talking about really physical x wide receivers uh but i think there's even a, a case that those guys i just mentioned don't quite have the long speed that marvin harrison also brings to the table. So this is like as straightforward as a projection as you could possibly imagine. We ask for big boy routes in almost all of these prospect videos and go and watch the rest here on the channel. So you can see how we're talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. versus all the other wide receiver prospects. Big boy routes, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s tape is littered with them. I mean, it, it already looks like he's played 30 NFL games and we're watching a dude run routes on Sunday versus NFL quarterbacks. So numbers that matter here. He was tied in contested targets at the top of this draft class in each of the last two years, 30 and 30 in 2023 and 2022. Obviously very different quarterbacks throwing to him, CJ Stroud, and then who the hell they threw out there this year. Um, he had a 13.1 ADOT this past season. That was 14.3 with CJ Stroud. And just focusing in on this past season, he actually had a yards after catch number of 6.4 yards. Comparatively, Malik Neighbors was at 6.6 .6 yards mm -hmm. after the catch on average. We'll say their force missed tackles numbers are wildly different. Marvin Harrison Jr. was at five force missed tackles, nine the previous season. Um, but again, this stands out to me because yards to gain can be achieved in a whole bunch of different ways. Over the past two seasons, Marvin Harrison Jr. has 68 receptions of 15 plus yards, right? That is 47% of his catches. Malik Neighbors, who he's often compared to at the top of this draft, 66 explosive plays, which is 41% of his reception. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about, again, explosive plays, 15 plus chunk yard gains, they are basically neck and neck. And in fact, MH Jr.'s numbers has a higher percentile. The yards per route run and first downs per route, it's Neighbors one in both those categories and then Marvin Harrison to 89th percentile age adjusted production as a whole. We're talking about a 21 year old early declare, all that fun stuff. Like you said, though, comparing them to Neighbors, Neighbors is a more dynamic player once yep. the ball is in his hands. But Marvin Harrison Jr., I think, is the more polished wide receiver before the ball is in his hands. And we haven't seen Malik Neighbors beat press man coverage from the X wide receiver spot like we've seen repeatedly with Marvin Harrison Jr. So that's kind of how I broke the ties here. I love Malik Neighbors, but I do have Marvin Harrison as my number one wide receiver. I'm assuming he's going to go it's probably to the Cardinals and be in that X wide receiver role. And I think that he's so polished that he's going to be 80 to 100 receptions as a rookie, which is uh, somewhat bold. But I think that is the kind of starting point that we're having with Marvin Harrison Jr. And if we, we didn't get any of the combine metrics with him, if he's a little bit faster than when he showed, there were some glimpses of him like on a deep post route. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't see him like routinely just completely blow by guys. If he does that a little bit better than what I kind of saw 
on tape, then we're talking about somebody that can be an all pro within the first couple of years of his, of his career. Every person who has watched both of these prospects is totally entire entitled to their own opinion. But like my interpretation of the Malik neighbors wide receiver one stuff seems to focus on his raw explosiveness, just the uncoachable trait mm -hmm. that he has that's natural ability just to pull away and separate and break tackles and turn a seven yard slant into a 47 yard gain. But I think you can equally say that Marvin Harrison Jr. does things that Malik Neighbors can't, right? Mm -hmm. Both are amazing. That's just a thought that I had when going through all of these typical, traditional X wide receiver on the line of scrimmage snaps. And then also just the fluidity and confidence he has mm -hmm. on those tight window contested catch throws where, again, he makes them look so effortless. Effortless. It's either throwing his back shoulder away and catching a spinning pass and then falling down for a first down, or it's like just his innate feel that he has probably from reps when he was six, seven to 16, 17 years old of the sideline where there's moments where he's literally tackled in the air, but somehow, despite his body being pulled in this direction, mm -hmm. gets one foot down in bounds to come down with this third and 10 catch for a gain of 18 yards. It can be diving catches. It can be off frame. The way that, again, he plays within his frame and around it, both before the catch and then going up to get the catch yeah. uh, is easily the best in this class and the best mm -hmm. we've seen in a very, very long time. That profile is what you said with is basically DeAndre Hopkins explaining him. But Marvin Harrison has another two inches on top of what DeAndre Hopkins has. And I think that Marvin Harrison is a little bit faster than DeAndre Hopkins. So, yeah, that's a type of player we're talking about comparing them like the best prospects of all time. I don't think that like Julio Jones is a fair comparison because Julio Jones to me is like even crazier athletically well, Catholic, yes. than Marvin Harrison. But uh, according to my model, 99th percentile, Calvin Johnson's the number one all time, Braylon Edwards, Amari Cooper, Sammy Watkins, and then it's Marvin Harrison Jr. So that's the, the fifth best in, in my model. I think of those names I just listed aside from Calvin Johnson, he's a much safer, straightforward prospect than those other types that we're talking about. Um, but I think that the difference between him and like the all time, all time greats is I think that like the Julio Jones just has a little bit more burst than what Marvin Harrison provides. But that's totally fine. Are you at all afraid or nervous that we don't have an athletic profile here on Marvin Harrison Jr.? Because mm, no. I like to have them like I just it helps me with comparisons, in right. fact, to say, hey, this was his shuttle. This was his 10 yard split. This was his vertical jump, so on and so forth. And obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr. opted out of the NFL combine testing. Instead, he's been apparently working at Ohio State just on wide receiver drills. Again, does it worry you at all that we have no athletic profile and we'll never have an athletic profile with Marvin Harrison Jr.? Not really, because he's been so damn productive. Um, but yeah, I, I think that like the long speed isn't elite. It's very good. It's completely serviceable. He's solid after the catch. He yeah. is just not special after the right. catch like Malik Neighbors is. Right. And it sounds like we're being negative on Marvin Harrison. I'm just trying to compare him to the best wide receiver prospects well, of all time. Doing, and, that's the and, and you're doing what every NFL general manager and scouting staff is doing right now in their draft rooms of, hey, if we have our pick of the top wide receiver, who is it going to be between these two? We're just right. having that same conversation. I think we're talking with neighbors and Marvin Harrison. I think that you're having this conversation if you're the Patriots at three, even like the second tier of quarterbacks versus this elite tier of wide receivers. Obviously, the quarterback's way more important, but these two guys to me are so damn That's good. That I think it's, it's part of that conversation, which is how rare they are. I think like the... The upside case, like the kind of more straightforward comp to me would be A.J. Green. Now, I thought A.J. Green at times was absolutely flying across the football field. So we'll see if Marvin Harrison does that. But I think like as a baseline, this sounds crazy. I think the baseline is like DeAndre Hopkins, who was a walking a thousand yards for like 10 years. A.J. Green is my comparison. And again, it goes back to it was A.J. Green, Julio Jones dating back to high school. Then both go to premier programs, both produce. Then both are, you know, top 15 selections, top 10 selections. In the NFL draft, and that is the same exact pathway that we've gotten. The way, again, they make things look easy, that other people look difficult when they're attempting the same thing, yeah. it stands out to me with both. And again, when just looking at over the past few seasons with these wide receiver prospects, Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't need these two-way goes or runways that so many of the other dudes need. Like, he's already fighting in a phone booth. Mm -hmm. He already has the dark arts of pushing off or somehow winning out of his frame. And... To that point, just 19 targets behind the line of scrimmage over the last two seasons and only 23 on top of that from one to four yards. Mm -hmm. That's 
of his 248 targets over the last two years were basically gimmies, right? Yeah. Everything he's done, he's had to work for on the football field. Yep. And he's shining and yep. yards per route run and everything face that out, you know, to an a millionth degree. In my notes, I have he's going to be a third and long guy. When there's not a play that's yep. going to work, you just say, well, Marvin Harrison's a good enough play. Let's see if he can make a contested grab. F it. Marvin. Down there somewhere. I'm going to just throw it up. Awesome prospect. This video does not have to be very long. Everyone knows he's very good. But yeah, I think that we're talking about one of the better prospects of all time, certainly. Okay. So final question. Is he your wide receiver one in this class? Yes, he is. Uh, just I would love to see neighbors transition to the outside more and like have that. But we don't have that on tape yet. And that's going to be the, the final little difference for me. I can totally see Malik Neighbors ending up as the best wide receiver from this draft class, but oh, yeah. heading into the actual event, Marvin Harrison Jr. is just like the simplest evaluation for me. Yeah. And <laughs> that's it's hard to find guys <laughs> at X receiver winning on the line of scrimmage repeatedly. And he does that. Yeah. I mean, no exaggerated movements are really necessary in his route running, but then he's also creating two or three yards of separation on yeah. top of that. And then when he doesn't create two or three se yards of separation, he's still winning. I mean, Did you see him snap off Quinian Mitchell in the yeah. end zone. I mean, just freak. He's six, four. All right. Well, since we saw, talk so glowingly about Marvin Harrison Jr., that means you also need to go back and watch all the other wide receiver prospect videos that we have. And the more of you that subscribe, the more cool stuff we get to do on this channel. So you're supporting us by hitting that subscribe button and the thumbs up. And we'll check on the next one.